Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the media queries, which are absolutely essential if you want to be, do any form of mobile responsive design, which in today's age as a developer, uh, my understanding is that you should definitely know, especially because all our sites needs to now function on multiple devices. For example, let's take intern site. Right now you're viewing it over 32 inch screen. If uh, let's go and check with uh, what you call as the Chrome tool. We have the site right now viewing at 1576 screen resolution. As you move down, you will see it's going to scale itself. And the um, skeleton behind all this, um, you can say, is, um, is, res is responsive media queries, actually. That's how I'm actually handling all um, the font sizes, all the container sizes. That's how it's functioning. So for instance, if you want to view it over the iPhone, you can just view how it looks. It looks perfect as can be seen, even the menus and they are very responsive. When it comes to iPad, you can view it over the iPad as well. So overall, you can see um, the same site can now function on multiple devices um, and making the user experience better actually. Though there could be some glitches, but obviously that you can increase, um, that you can improve with time. So that's not a big deal. So let's see how media queries actually work. Uh, to do that, I have an um, index file uh, which has a simple HTML and a style sheet which is connected to obviously this index file. And on the right side, you are seeing the output of this index file. Um, to save my life, I am using the Visual Studio Code along with an extension live server. This uh, extension uh, will help you view this, uh, what you call as whatever changes you do on the real time as a sort of a live server, you can say. So for example, if I remove this and save, you're going to automatically see the change on the right hand side. Now, coming back to the media queries, the first important stuff is this meta tag viewport. This basically was introduced in HTML5 to take control over the viewport. You should um, definitely, in, in order to actually do the, in order to have a responsive behavior, you need to include this meta tag. The two things over here you should take notice of is basically the content uh, width is equals to device width and initial scale is equals to one. Width basically is uh, sets the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device. Uh, while initial scale is sort of a thing which controls the zoom. Um, zoom level of the page, you can say. In case you want to study more, you can just Google it and learn more about it. While I'll just go through how it uh, how it works along on in the, with the code actually. So let's just bring in some code uh, to save time. I've just actually included over here some examples. So um, this CSS is very. I mean, just ignore this for now. The CSS is pretty common. So you are seeing um, in the body, I have defined the font family uh, Arial. So as can be seen, this is an Arial. Then H1 to be of a green color. So heading is a green color with the font size defined. And same goes for the paragraphs to be black color and the font size to be 40 pixels. I have over here an, an image as well, which is of a 500 by 500 uh, pixel size. Obviously, I wanted to uh, show you guys how um, how you can handle the image responsiveness as well. Now, moving down, how you can actually add the media queries. Normally, you add media queries at the bottom of your style sheet. The reason is obviously the first part covers the desktop area and the later on you can handle different screen sizes. For example, if you want, um, let, okay, just mo even moving ahead, even before moving ahead, uh, on the screen sizes, I would like to let you know how you can define a media query. Media query was it actually in, is a technique that was introduced in CSS3, and all it uses is add, you need to write an at media, then you need to define the type, which could be your screen, which could be the print for the print devices, or you can use an all as well, which could be, uh, which could function at like um, this. Uh, max with 400 pixel, let's say, and so or it's going to cover all the uh, all the devices. Or you can just simply ignore the all. By default, the CSS will know that you are actually talking about 
uh, screen sizes, you know, which are actually less than 400 pixels if you're using a Max. So coming back to um, um, the different sizes, for example, normally the screen sizes for desktop are anything between one to eight, one pixels or higher, or for the normal, um, you can say for the laptops, uh, normal laptops, it could be between 1025 pixels and 1280 pixels. You can obviously use that. For iPads is um, between 1024 and 768. And for, for instance, for iPhone, it could be 480 pixels or low. I'll just ignore everything for now uh, because this could be, this could actually confuse you a bit. So let's just try and uh, play with it. So right now you just see a simple HTML page. Now let's make it responsive to um, iPhone, which is 480 pixels over here. As you can see, the font is quite large and the image, um, if we actually zoom out a bit, you will see it's, it's not behaving it correctly. So let's just uh, fix this out a bit. Um, so what we can do now is number one, we need to write a media query. So add media. I'm going to ignore, I'm going to ignore writing all. I'll just use at media max one dash width uh, 480 pixels and we'll define. Um, so let's just target first the heading. So inside you will just write your normal CSS. Let's say I want to change the color of uh, color from green to blue. So let's do that. So you can see it changes because, and if I actually increase the size automatically, you're seeing the color is actually getting changed. Now let's say we want to reduce the font size. Uh, font size, maybe 15 pixels. So if you do that, oh, it's thick. Let's make it 100%. It because it's like too bad. Uh, make it 25 pixels. Uh, too bad still. Make it 45 pixels. Looks better. Let's move ahead on the paragraphs. Um, I want to change the color a bit. And um, also the size was too big for the screen. And I'm going to make it, let's say 22 pixels. Now it looks better. Okay, now for the image, obviously it's not responsive. So uh, what we can do it is we can either go and define a class responsive uh, image, take that and then use that in the CSS and maybe make it width is equals to 80 80 percent uh, of the screen size so you can now say it's reduced so as i reduce you can see um the size of the image is getting reduced maybe i want to make it um 90 percent and okay it's not bad it's not bad now what if i want to change the uh, maybe uh what do you call what do you call as the define the width for the paragraph right? and make it 80 percent of the screen as well mm, okay it's now coming more better what about let's suppose i want to so this was like uh, handling the what do you call it as uh, responsive behavior for the iphone devices what about if you wanted i want to handle it for the ipad so as i said um, it was one, um, between one. It was between seven seventy six and one zero two four. What if we just handled for one zero two four? And over here, I will change the color maybe to black, and and obviously increase the font size a bit. Previously, it was sixty pixels. I'll make it fifty five pixels. So let's just start, go and check. You can see it's changing. Because I haven't defined anything for the paragraph, you will see, you will, you will see that it's going to go default width. Another important stuff that you should remember is the re uh, is that if let's suppose if you place like this, it's going to override all your style tree, all your styles 
that you have defined. So make sure that you define your media queries below your code. That's very important. Um, hopefully, I mean, this explanation and this demo should get you started with the media queries.